Hello everyone, welcome to the top 5 most influential cars in SL8. These cars were kings at times, but they're not kings anymore due to more powerful cars being released, but these cars led to those powerful cars to be, you know, released at their times. But we have cars that um, were pretty dominant, and uh, they really set the bar for their classes. And uh, without further ado, let's get into the list. Starting off with an honorable mention, we have the Koenigsegg 101. This is an old car, but... Um, this was an S-Class car that released in 2014 and uh, after a long string of S-Class Kings that only won by, you know, a few frames, a few tenths of a second. We had the Hennessy Venom which was a pretty good car but then we had the Arrow that competed with it and we finally got a dominant S-Class car that was for sure the King and it was credits. It was not a premium and um, everyone was able to buy it and max it, even me who doesn't really farm. And um, with that, it was shut down by the 9FF in the Pro Kits update, but it still has a really good farming race for Season 9. It was the first farming race to be in Asphalt 8, really. Unless you include the Biome Dubai, but Koenigsegg 1 to 1 was better. Coming in at number 5, we have the McLaren P1. This is an even older car than the Koenigsegg, but this is special because this was the last A-Class car, and it was really the last King that had cheap upgrades, you know, after McLaren P1, we had the SSC Twitara, which had really expensive upgrades, something we'd never seen before until now, it's in like every car, but this McLaren P1 was top 1000 in its original cup, and it was pretty cheap to upgrade, and even if you didn't win the car, it was also pretty cheap to buy, you know, for under a million, you could have this car maxed, and this was at a time where there were no pro kits in the game, so it was a really good car, it was really good in multiplayer since the other good car in the game was the Lycan at the time. So, it can compete in the top ranks, and uh, unfortunately, you know, there's so much more powerful cars, including one that comes later on this list, and um, from McLaren P1, sad to see it uh, not be as good anymore, but it was still a great A-class car that rules the old school asphalt time. Coming at number 4, we have the Renault Desir. This is uh, the only D-class car on this list, and um, this is number 4 because this was the first car to really utilize the Pro Kits. You could argue that the Felino or the 9FF, those were also released in the same update as the Desir. They could also be uh, the first cars to utilize the Pro Kits, but the Desir um, was the one that really showed how powerful Pro Kits can make a car. At just the max um, upgrades, the Renault Desir wouldn't be as powerful as it was with the Pro Kits, but with the Pro Kits added, it was really fast, and it was able to survive D-Class for a long time, until the Geely finally dropped. But this car, and also it was 180 tokens, it is still the cheapest token car in the entire game. It's definitely worth picking up if you don't own the car yet. And that is our number 4 spot. Coming at number 3, we have the 2016 Chevrolet Camaro SS. You know, this car is so overpowered, and um... The reason I'm putting this at number 3 and not the BMW homage is because this car led up to the BMW homage. It started a trend for stupid rank boosts, like really stupid. If I remember correctly, the car starting it was 1168 and it goes all the way up to 1771 without the tuning kit. So it was one of the first cars and I know the F-150 and the Desir had big tuning kit boosts but this one really defied overpoweredness. And um... Too bad it was only king for a couple weeks because then the BMW homage released quickly and that became insane but we wouldn't have the BMW without this overpowered Camaro. And the Camaro is still useful, it is still one of the best multiplayer cars ever and probably will be for a long time. And um, you know it's sad that this car was only king for a little bit but it still was a king. Um, and that's our number 3 spot. Coming at number two, we have the Trion Nemesis. I know it's not number one, right? But this S-Class car was really popular. It was finally an S-Class car that was for sure the king, kind of like the K1. But unlike the K1, this thing had acceleration through the roof. And uh, it had, for a long time, the best acceleration in the entire game. And it was credits, so a lot of people picked up this car and were able to max pro it. The downside was it had 60 forced induction V8s pro it, but it was able to survive for a whole year. Even after the Devil 16 was released, it was able to beat it on some tracks, and then, you know, you had the Fenner, the GT by Citrion, they couldn't beat it. The Renault RSL won in the same update. 
they couldn't catch up to the Tryon. But now that we have the Aston Martin Vulcan, Tryon is officially gonna die now. It is still though the best credit S-Class car that you can buy. So with that, that is our number two spot. Coming in at number one, we have the Ferrari 330p4. Oh boy, do you guys remember when this car was released? This was the first A-Class car, really the first non-S-Class car, that can compete with S-Class. The problem with asphalt when this car was released was Pro Kits were still pretty new, and um, the Enzo required more than 40 V12 engines to fully Pro. And, you know, barely anyone can get that amount so early into the Pro Kits era, but 330p4 only needed a fraction of that V12 requirement, and um, those who were able to win it were able to get a beast that could really rule the whole game for a little bit until people started proing the Enzo. And then the biggest proof that this car was an influential king was the 1 million likes cup. If you don't remember, that was a dragon tree, and this was when the HTT Plether was out. Um, the 330p4 dominated the leaderboard. Even though the Enzo was a better car, nobody really had it max pro. Everyone used the 330p4. And it was a smart choice because it was a really good car. It still is. It's very overpowered. And um, it is the first car that really set the bar for what a non-S-Class car can do. Because that led up to the 675 and that led up to our overpowered cars such as the Camaro and BMW. Everyone really has the P330 P4. It goes on discount all the time. It is not a car to miss. It is definitely the most influential king in asphalt. So with that, that concludes our list. Um, pretty interesting list we got here, 330p4 coming in at number one. But uh, thank you guys for watching, let me know what you guys want to see next, and I'll talk to you guys later.